what's your, your feeling as an insider? Do we talk about uh, enlargement at all? I think enlargement is spoken about as something which has to be thought about in the long term. It's not seen as a policy file that everyone's attracted to. People constantly look behind and say, look what happened when we brought the others in. Yeah. And yeah. actually, do we want to yeah. grow yeah. even larger? Yeah. So it's that kind of sense that some of the ones who have been successful in the club are being unfair uh, completely. But my, I go back to my point. I think collectively, they're not being strategic about what you represent here in the Western Balkans for the future of peace, security and defence, but also economic growth. So I think what needs to happen is that you need to have a, um, a movement on both sides. And I think when you, pay, you make the point, it's been some 10, 15 years, lots of money. Imagine if there was an audit of how much money has gone into the Western Balkans. What's the return for you, your children or family, etc., in terms of change? The, 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 the result is raise of the uh, Euroscepticism and the negative attitude Indeed. towards the Indeed. European Union. Indeed. And what a waste of opportunity. I think... What a waste of opportunity, money, time. Indeed. But you know, you the thing it. is, what we, we said that when COVID hit us, mm -hmm. that we would change. Sometimes we would actually connect with each other more. You know, the banging on the streets, people felt a sense of community and thought, wow, I, this will never go back to normal. The worry is that when the Ukraine war started, everybody, the, I suppose, no, the, the big experts thought it would never happen, even though there was intelligence to suggest, probably eight months before, that it, this was definitely a dead cert. We're not changing our behavior, and by we, I mean the Union, the European Union, the European project, and I say this all due respect, because I think they've done a brilliant job in the COVID crisis, I think they've created the, the biggest uh, capital innovation through the Recovery and Resilience Fund. You've had some real creativity and they've moved with speed to joint procurement, everything. But what I don't understand is the short-sightedness of the current administration, the current commissioner and the group of commissioners. And together with NATO and others to think actually, Western Balkans represent an opportunity. They should be brought in, loved up, and seen as part of our new frontier towards the east. Because actually, if you're going to wait, what you'll end up doing no, is they'll realise that others, malevolent forces from the east or the south, in the Middle East, etc., will be in there. And there already are. And yeah. We know that. Everybody who's coming here is saying that, yeah, Balkan is belonging to Europe. It's a huge potential, but, you know, everything. But then still we are, you know, running, you know, in the very same... Uh, same uh, uh, Please. Now, it's clear that European Union has a difficulty to function with so many member states within the framework of the Lisbon Treaty. But uh, uh, then also we can't see any movement, any serious initiative saying, well, we should change the Lisbon Treaty in order to make places for the newcomers. So, uh, in, a, in, in the meantime, we have to make a new, you know, exception to Bulgaria now, to change the constitution. Why to start the negotiation? The political party who will go to the election and present to themselves as a pro-European in the next election, saying uh, we, we should change the, uh, the, 